Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to create virtual machine for domain controller in Azure. Um, in previous video, we took an introduction to MS Azure portal, but now we're ready for our implementation. These are the high-level steps uh, in order to create a virtual machine for our domain controller. Number one, we will create a resource, Windows 2016 data center. When we create a resource, that means we're creating a virtual machine and the operating system that we wanted to use is Windows 2016 data center and um, create resource group. This is must. If you already have the group, then you can use the existing group. But if you don't have the group, this is our uh, first Im implementation video where we're going to create the virtual machine. So we do need to create a resource group. Uh, my intention is that I will create two domain controllers for high availability. Uh, so I'll create a resource group that will have the domain controller machines. And then I will create another resource group that will have the SQL Server uh, virtual machines in it. So create virtual network. Obviously, we need to create the network interfaces uh, in order to set up the static IP and other requirements. Uh, then we will create a storage account. This is um, to add any um, uh, data disk that we need uh, in our uh, uh, newly created virtual machines. Then we'll create an availability set. Again, as I said, that uh, we're going to create two domain controllers and put them in one availability set so that they can communicate with each other and we can if one goes down, the other one can take over all the resources. And then we will set up uh, ports. Uh, this is also mandatory. If you wanted to um, connect with the, your virtual machines remotely, you need to uh, enable uh, certain ports. If you wanted to uh, enable you know, the access to uh, other world internet, then you need to open uh, certain ports, which is 443 specifically. But uh, if you want to just um, RDP, you have to open that port as well, and we will see that in a second. Uh, and then we will create Active Directory Domain Controller Services. Uh, that is Windows Services. We will, uh, again, promote our own Active Directory co uh, Domain Controller. If I do that in this video, this video is going to be really long. We will cover that in the next video. Right now, we're just going to create a virtual machine and getting it ready for uh, to become our domain controller. So let's go. This is my Azure portal. Right now, I don't have any resource created, um, any virtual machine, nothing uh, is there. It's just um, um, I signed up and I um, logged into my Azure. So there are multiple ways that you could um, create resource. You can click here, create a resource and pick what you want to create, or you can click right here, create resource. So I'll just click on here. And these are the resources that's available and based on your subscription, you can create, uh, you know, pick one and create based on your needs. But um, for this video, we're going to create Windows Server 2016 data center. So I'll click on that. So as you can see, my subscription is free trial. Um, but right now, I don't have a resource group. You have to select all the asterisk means these things are mandatory you have to set those up uh, in order to move forward so i will just uh, click on create new resource group and name the resource group i'm going to create it um, tech brothers azure tbs az dn s dns resource group rg Click OK. And now the name of virtual machine. This is your host name. AZ DC1. The, the reason I'm putting it DC1 because my intention is to create another domain controller so we will have high availability between the domains. Eastern US, um, my region is already set up, but uh, if you are in different region, you, you need to set up this region. Uh, optional uh, availability options, no interface, um, no infrastructure redundancy required. If we, if our intention would have been just one domain controller, we may not need uh, uh, availability option at all. So if you click on that, we are going to set up the availability set because we are going to create another domain as well. So availability set right now, we it doesn't exist. So let's click on create new.
a D DNS AS Tech Brothers Azure DNS availability set. The fault domain is two. Uh, you can add as many machine in this availability set as you want. I'm not sure um, you know the limit right now, but uh, uh, the update domains it's like five right here. Use managed disk. Uh, we will uh, use managed disk later on, but uh, right now let's just set up uh, our availability set. Click OK. And the image, if you have your own image already uh, imported into your portal, you can select those. But again, we selected Windows Server 2016 Data Center. And the size, the CPU right here, one CPU and 3.5 gig memory. I'm going to keep the standard size because otherwise I'll be charged a lot and I only have to $200 really to finish this tutorial. So you can click on change size and uh, increase the number of CPUs and the RAM that is needed for your environment. This is uh, the administration uh, account. This is when you uh, go in, when you create the virtual machine and um, uh, log in, uh, just like in on-premise, we used to use the administrator account while building the machine. This is exactly the same thing. So you need to provide an account and the password. Password needs to be more than 12 characters. It'll tell you right there. And this is what we're, where we're going to uh, set up our ports. The public inbound ports right now is none. If you leave it this way, you might not be able to. You can change it later on, but um, from the get-go, once this machine is um, uh, ready for us to use, um, we will not be able to connect to it. So I will just click on Allow Selected Ports, and in Selection, you will see the HTTP, that's internal communication, HTTPS, that's external uh, communication. Um, this is secure shell right here, SSH 22. That's the port number. 443 is the port number, and this is the service name. So I'm going to select RDP because I will be RDPing from the, the my local laptop that becomes public. So I will open this, and I will also open the internal communication. Now it's asking you, you um, already have a Windows license. If you do, you can click, then you can save money. But right now I don't have it. So um, they will charge me to use this license, which is OK. And we will click Next, the disk. So we don't have uh, any really disk. The Usually uh, the OS disk type, this premium SSD is very costly. So I'm going to go with standard HDD for this demo purposes. But keep in mind that if you're um, using another subscription and working for an organization, they you should use premium SSD because that's recommended for uh, a SQL Server clustering and obviously your domain controller. But uh, it's very um, costly about, I would say, uh, $108 a month. So I'm going to select this standard HDD. and we will create and attach a new disk or if you have existing disk you can attach that but i'm going to click on create and attach a new disk so i'm not going to use uh, this this does not include uh, the operating system disk that will be given to you based on your selection the hdd in my case this uh, this is an extra data disk that i want to create so size is obviously in gigs right here. This is uh, uh, one terabyte. I don't need that big of a disk, so I will just go with the 400 gig. Now, up here, the disk type, you can have a snapshot disk, storage blob, or empty disk. I wanted to create an empty disk so I can bring it online when my resource or when my virtual machine is created. Click OK. 
Now, if we go click uh, set up the networking, click next. The virtual network, uh, it'll take um, the, this is default name, VNet virtual network, and it took the resource group as well. So if you wanted to create a new virtual group, um, you will probably, if you click, click on new, you will know more properties that what is it uh, basically the virtual network means. Right here, uh, the IP address range right now that is given to us. Um, so any IP address, we have 256 addresses to use. So um, 255.255.255.0, that is our subnet mass right here. Uh, that's what it means, uh, 24. So this is uh, all the IP address we have to have in this range, 10.001 and then uh, to 250. So uh, I just wanted to show you that this is this is how your um, virtual network look like. If you need to create another network, you can click here and create um, another network. Sometimes there the implementation is that your domain controller might be in a different subnet than your other machines. But uh, we're going to keep uh, for now just this address because um, you know later on if we feel the need that we need to create another subnet and create some videos, we will probably uh, come back and create another um, virtual network. So I'm going to discard that and accept the subnet right here, 10.0.0. Public IP, um, right here you can say none if you are not exposing this to public. Uh, but um, right here, since I'm going to do the remote into it, so I will just, uh, it, it took the name right here. Um, and the uh, NIC Network Security Group Basics. You can set up your own security group based on your organization um, uh, security standards. Public inbound port, allow ports. Obviously, we set that up previously. Accelerated networking off right now. Anything that you turn on, you will be charged a little bit extra. Load balancing, right now, let's not set up the load balance. Uh, we will create a separate video to create the load balance, and then we will uh, add into that uh, load balance. If you click on yes, it will give you two types of load balance, application gateway and Azure load balancer. Azure load balancer will allow you right here, the TCP UDP uh, ports, and application is for HTTP and HTTPS web traffic. Uh, if you have a web, you build website and you wanted to open the web, website to internet, then yes, this is uh, the load balancer you will use. But let's click no for now. And then um, we'll later on, if we need to, we'll uh, create, a, actually we would need to uh, create load balancer for our cluster, but uh, uh, that's later on in the videos. Click management. This is uh, our domain controller. That's why we, we really don't need it. Boot diagnostic, these are just the uh, um, uh, by default values. If you wanted to change any of that, you can. It's pretty standard. Identity, auto shut down, uh, backup, and stuff like that. So let's click on guest config. If you have any um, script that needs to be run once this machine is uh, created, uh, for example, if you run security scan or if you need to run uh, a PowerShell script, you need to select here. You need to import it into your portal first, and then you can select it here, and it'll run after, uh, after your machine is um, uh, created. Tags are really um, important if you're working with lots of machines. Uh, tags are really there for searching purposes. It makes it easier to <coughs> excuse, excuse me, to search the um, your virtual machine or specific virtual machine. I'm not going to give any tag because there there aren't going to be many machines in this portal. So click review and create. It'll validate if anything that it says that the validation fails, then we need to go back and select that and, and correct that before we create the machine. So it won't actually let you create the machine if validation did not pass. Our validation path passed, so let's go and click on Create. Up here, there would be status of the deployment. 
So what it means is when we see the initialized deployment, it is creating this virtual machine based on the configuration that we just provided. So it's going to take some time. Right here, uh, it'll show you your deployment is underway and each component as it, it deploys right here, it will show um, the status of that. I'll go ahead and pause the video and uh, once deployment is completed, we'll be back. All right, our deployment is completed. We can go and look at our virtual machines. As you can see, the TBS Azure DC1 virtual machine is running right now. You can click on it and look at uh, different properties of it. So this is about it for this video. Uh, please um, tune for the next one where we are going to install um, our domain controller Active Directory services on this machine. And then we'll do the same thing on another uh, domain controller. I hope this helps.